Hi, so welcome everybody. This is Casey Lapierre, and I'm here for the Institute of Applied Equine Podiatry. And our podcast is called Intelligent Design Hoof Care. And in this episode, I want to talk about uh, hemodynamic response. Okay, some of you may know of it as circulation. Okay, in the last episode, we talked about how uh, different um, fads and techniques uh, for shoeing the horse and for actually trimming the horse uh, affect circulation. And what I want to do is to give you a, a, um, some information as to what hemodynamics actually is in a horse's foot. So there are some basics that we need to know. Okay, let me just bring up a, uh, show you a, a, a picture here. Okay, so we, when we look at uh, the hoof, what I actually see, and it's, I talk to my students about, is I actually see the foot of the horse. And that's what you see up on the screen right now is the foot of the horse. Okay, so what you're looking at are various dermis or what we call vascular structure. Okay, so that's our dermis. And for instance, uh, at the, uh, the coronary band dermis is made up of papillae. It's very vascular and it actually produces uh, the stratum medium or the epithelium or the horn for what you see as your outer hoof wall is actually, we call it the stratum medium. And then you also see those, uh, the lamella, which look like pleats on a lampshade or what, however you want to view it, but they actually produce, or the, um, that dermis provides the nutrients in the epithelium for the production of your inner wall. Okay, that which makes up the matrix. So when we talk about balance and we talk about hemodynamics and circulation in the horse's foot, it's very important that we have a balanced hoof capsule to what you see on the screen, that foot. Okay, because what we have is a, a vascular plexus. Okay, so um, you know, I, I thank you, Dr. Horst, for allowing me to uh, you know use his illustration here is is uh plasticine model of um, the vasculature of the horse's foot. And what you're seeing here are the blood vessels. Okay, you're seeing the, the various blood vessels and they are what are contained in that dermis. Okay, so the, he did a model of that dermis and that's what you just saw. Well, if we look at the layers that that dermis represents, uh, this is a photograph uh, of a dissection I was doing. And what you can see is where we have the coronary band, we have the coronary band dermis, but beneath the coronary band dermis is still very vascular. The coronary band actually is only attached to cartilage in two very small areas. And that's back in our heels at what we call our appendages. Okay, so what you see up on the screen right now is the basic, uh, you know, how the blood gets to the foot. We have what's called a van apparatus, okay, that stands for vein, artery, and nerve. And there is a location where we take digital pulse on each side of the pastern where, these, where this vein, artery, and nerve enter the foot, actually enter into the foot and you can see right there where it says vein apparatus there's actually a notch in the cartilage where the vein actually and the artery and the nerve actually pass into the foot we call that the proper palmar digital artery proper palmar digital vein and proper palmar digital nerve so there is some basic anatomy you need to know if you're going to explore hemodynamics in the horse's foot and uh, one of the basics is that 75% of the volume of blood actually resides in veins, okay? not in your ar arterioles, your arteries, and your capillaries. Okay? It actually resides in veins. So when you see a veterinarian doing, doing a veneograph, they're actually injecting a, uh, you know, a medium or a, a contrast medium into the vein so that they can, they can see venous flow not arterial flow, but venous flow. And, um, you know, we, we're going to discuss that a little bit more when I show you a video uh, on basic hemodynamics here. Okay. So what we're looking at, you know, as I said, uh, are all of the various dermis. And you can see there's a, actually a very vascular bed behind the coronary band. The coronary band is actually a fibrocartilage band. 
Well, in uh, the basic anatomy, having so much volume in veins, any distortion of hoof to foot results in hemodynamic response. Okay, that's that's fluid seeking low pressure. So if we look at uh, how the hoof relates to the foot, I think you can see how any distortion or movement of the hoof capsule will actually put pressure on the plexus, on the dermis, and result in a hemodynamic response in movement of blood, in movement of fluid, okay? So I'm going to show you a, a little video that talks about hemodynamic response on uh, how uh, distortion of the hoof capsule and balance of the hoof capsule has such a, a huge impact on circulation, okay? So let me bring that up. Uh, you can look this up on YouTube, okay? Uh, you can take the link right off of uh, off the video. Uh, but I'm going to be going through this video and relating it to the actual, to the horse's hoof, okay? So let me do that right now. I'm going to add that. We will see the most fundamental concept of hemodynamics, the relationship between pressure, blood flow, and resistance. Uh, something really important that he just said, okay? so. Um, we're talking about uh, blood flow and pressure and resistance, okay? So there are a lot of things uh, in the horse's hoof uh, that are very specific to hemodynamics or to circulation, and not only circulation, but lymphatics. And we're going to talk about that in another episode. But I just want to talk about circulation and how important balance is uh, when it comes to hoof to foot. Okay, so let me continue on with this. First, let's quickly revise what each one of these is. Blood flow is the total quantity of blood that passes through a given point in circulation in a given period. Blood pressure is the force exerted by blood against the vessel wall. High pressure at one end of the artery tends to push the blood. Okay, so we're going to start talking about um, how blood vessels uh, get constricted in the hoof, not simply through um, uh, neurological function uh, and physiology, but also by the constriction of hoof on the dermis because it, the dermis has a backing or a foundation of either bone or cartilage or digital cushion it, in your frog, for instance. So their uh, resistance can be applied of uh, the hoof to its foundation, squeezing the dermis. Okay, so we're going to talk more about that. And resistance is the force opposing the blood flow. Now we have two factors remaining, blood pressure and the radius of blood vessels. Okay, uh, in the horse's foot, these two factors become extremely important. Okay, so I want you to remember that, okay? These two are used to control flow. To understand their fundamental role, the analogy of height will help again. The heart is at the highest level of blood pressure in the entire circulation. That is because the pumping activity of the heart itself generates the pressure in the first place. The other organs are at lower pressure. So right here, I, I stopped the video because I want you to start thinking of the hoof as an organ, okay? And it's at it's at the most distal uh, point on the horse's limb, uh, fathers from the horse's heart. Connecting the heart to all the organs are arteries in which the blood flows down the pressure gradient. In this context, the method to control blood pressure is to regulate the pumping activity of the heart, or in other words, the cardiac output. When the pumping increases, the central pressure increases. It increases the pressure gradient towards all the organs. And there... Okay, it increases the pressure to the feet as well. We know that um, when we're teaching our, we're teaching our, our students uh, on taking digital pulse, Okay, we don't we don't take digital pulse, which is, uh, you know, taken at the pastern uh, after exercise. Okay, we, we take it when the horse is at rest, okay? Therefore, 
it tends to increase blood flow to all the organs. And when the pumping activity decreases, this central pressure falls, and this tends to decrease the flow to all the organs. You, you have to remember we're talking arterial blood flow here, okay, not venial blood flow. Okay, so um, I'm relating this because we're looking at uh, in hoof care, in particularly in laminitis and chronic founder, where veterinarians are using venographs to uh, determine treatment protocols and a return of circulation. So in my book, Laminitis Founder and Equine Digital Osteoarthritis, in the chapter on hemodynamics, I actually did cite a paper that was done by by uh, C.E. Weil and uh, Chris Pollitt, Professor Pollitt. And this was done in 2017. And the paper cites, there is no conclusive evidence available to guide recommendations as to whether veneograms provide any greater diagnostic or prognostic information compared to the use of plain radiographs in the horse with chronic laminitis. Okay. Now let's see the role of the radius of the blood vessels. It's a wonderful tool when it comes to the regulation of blood flow. There okay, did you hear that statement? It's a wonderful tool when it comes to the regulation of blood flow. Radius, okay? All right, so I'm sorry I interrupted that. There are two beautiful things about it. Two beautiful things. One is that it's related to the flow by the fourth power. Okay. And second, it allows the regulation of flow at the individual organ level. Ah, that's so important. The regulation of flow at the organ level. Okay, so at that level of the foot, okay, we know that the radius of a blood vessel, blood vessel is going to determine blood flow. Okay, I hope this is starting to you know, some light bulbs are going off. First, let's see the importance of the fourth power. As blood flow is proportional to the radius to the fourth power, its impact on blood flow is much more. By the very math, we can understand that if the blood vessels are constricted to half the radius, the blood flow decreases 16 times. And if they are dilated to double the radius, the flow increases 16 times. Thus, all right. Can, <laughs> this is is so important. Okay, and, and when it comes to how the foot distorts, when it comes to the health of your hoof capsule, okay, uh, this just came to mind. Was you know when we have a a, a hoof capsule with poor matrix, okay, that foot is going to distort differently, okay, and so when we have a restriction of just half, half the diameter of a blood vessel. Okay, the blood flow is reduced 16 fold. Only a four fold change in radius produces 256 fold change in blood flow. It's just, it's, isn't that huge? It is huge. Radius has this huge impact. Again, there are two reasons. One mm -hmm. is pure math. Yeah. The cross section area of the vessel is pi r squared. Yeah. So with an increase in radius, the space that blood gets to pass through increases by the square function. Yeah. And second, the blood mostly flows in a laminar fashion. What happens in this is that the outer layer of blood experiences very high friction against the wall, so it moves very slowly. The inner concentric layers slip over the outer layer, so it moves faster than that. This way, as we go to the center, the speed of flow increases. The fastest flowing streams are at the center. Now, when the vessel gets narrower, it's these fastest flowing streams that are lost. So the flow decreases exponentially with a decrease in radius. And vice versa, when the vessel dilates, the new layer that develops at the center flows faster than all existing layers. So flow increases very rapidly with an increase in radius. Thus, even a small change in radius produces large changes in flow. So that's the beauty of fourth power, but it's just one thing. The other special thing about radius is that each organ has its own arterial supply. Okay, so we can actually define 
the hoof as an organ. It has its own arterial supply. We call that the proper pulmonary digital artery. Okay, so um, in my class, I, I, I teach, uh, you know, um, the anatomy of circulation in the horse's foot along with uh, the lymphatics in the horse's foot. But we start with understanding that the foot is defined as an organ. Okay? It can be defined as an organ. To regulate the radius of vessels, we have many control systems like sympathetic and parasympathetic innervation, mm -hmm. certain circulating hormones, and even auto-regulation by the organ itself, as we just saw. They cause vasoconstriction or dilatation as needed. Thus, the radius of vessels is a wonderful tool when used by our body's normal control systems. Okay, so let's take this to the horse's hoof again, okay? So the importance of balance of hoof to foot, it, it should be, it should start to be, you know, um, start to really resonate with you. But in the wrong hands of pathological conditions, uh -huh. it can cause serious problems too. For example, if a pathological obstruction in an artery reduces the radius by half, the fall in the flow would be 16 times. Okay, so let's just take that to the hoof for a minute, okay? So if we have an unbalanced foot, it's not landing correctly. It's not distorting correctly. Okay, you're putting, uh, you have a farrier and we, we put a uh, dental impression material in and it's putting too much pressure in one given area throughout the stride. So it's actually going to create resistance where there should be no resistance and it's actually going to reduce the flow if we only get this, this constriction can severely okay. compromise the function of the target organ um yes we are, we're going to be looking at biomechanics uh the the laws that uh, that regulate blood flow uh, or fluid dynamics because we always that we understand that fluid always seeks low pressure so that in balancing the hoof and knowing the phases of the stride, knowing which structures are, are distorting at what given moment throughout the stride helps us to determine whether or not we're actually helping this horse uh, or helping the foot uh, regulate its hemodynamics. All right, so that wraps up episode six of Intelligent Design Hoof Care. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you found this information of value. And uh, we hope that you will subscribe to our channel. You can subscribe uh, to YouTube, and it's YouTube forward slash Casey Lapierre. You can find information on Applied Equine Podiatry at uh, AppliedEquinePodiatry.org. That's our school site. You will find courses and uh, distance learning and uh, information there. There are also articles and videos that are posted there. You can also follow us on uh, Facebook. Okay? If you go to Facebook uh, forward slash Applied Equine Podiatry, uh, we'd love to have you follow us. We're going to be doing uh, webinars uh, that uh, are going to be free webinars uh, that you can attend. And if you're a follower, you'll get notice of it. Uh, so we look forward to it. In the next episode, I think what we're going to be doing is we're actually going to be discussing the differences between applied equine podiatry, conventional farrier practice, and the natural hoof care provider. Okay, so if you'd like to learn more about the HPT balance method and applied equine podiatry, be sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can see the next episode. All right, guys, take care. God bless. And have a great one. Thank <laughs> you.